coming up. These little rail cars have been around for decades. Looking for defects the naked eye just can't see. They may look old, but the technology on board works. The company behind all this traces its roots back to a prolific inventor. So what exactly is a Sperry car? Well, I'm gonna tell you all about it next. Here in Tucker, Georgia, it looks like a school bus on rails is approaching, but this little rail car does not carry passengers. No, it actually houses technology that helps to make railroads safer. Using non-destructive testing methods, Sperry cars and high rail trucks gather data on rail health and find rail defects worldwide. These days, they use modern electronics and computers, but things were a little more analog when the company started. Sperry Rail Service was founded in 1928 by Dr. Elmer Sperry. He was an entrepreneur and inventor, famous for the development of a gyro compass that the U.S. Navy depended on in both world wars. His endeavors on land were equally impressive. Early railroads had a problem. It was difficult to detect rail defects that couldn't be seen with the naked eye specifically transverse fissures. These appear during the manufacturing of the rail, but are often so small they can't be detected. They then grow after the rails are put into service. Sperry's solution to finding these fissures? Use induction. According to the company's website, its system introduces electrical current into the railhead and monitors the resulting magnetic field. This was a successful solution, but it could not detect defects everywhere. It would be supplemented by ultrasonic inspection technology in the 1950s and 60s. And that's now the most common form of testing. This method, to put it simply, uses sound waves. The detector array on this car's truck houses both induction and ultrasonic equipment. Water dropped in front of these fluid-filled roller search units allows the ultrasonic waves to penetrate the rail. Meanwhile, brushes here deliver the electrical current needed for induction testing. Okay, there's one other eye-catching piece of equipment under this Sperry car. I'm not 100% sure what these are, but I believe they house special cameras that look at the rail head and rail web. This technology allows the operator to look at the digital image of an area with a potential defect instead of getting out and hand testing it. Whatever this is, apparently the glass protecting it has to be cleaned from time to time. Okay, so the operator sits in the rear of the car. At one time, there was a machine back here spitting out paper tape with ink marks showing where a potential defect was. Now, computers have taken over. A driver sits at the front of the car along with a pilot from the railroad who knows the territory. There's also a galley and living quarters on board, but I don't know if they're still used in the 21st century. This was once a cruise home away from home. Now, Sperry cars certainly are not the most modern looking things on the rails today. They actually evolved from something called a doodle bug. Doodlebugs roamed the rails in the first few decades of the 20th century on rail lines that didn't see high passenger volumes. Believe it or not, many were produced by EMC, which would eventually become General Motors' Electromotive Division, a major locomotive manufacturer. Cars like number 124 used to haul passengers before being converted into inspection vehicles. Most doodlebugs were powered by gas engines, but today's Sperry cars use diesel. This car, number 145, named the Bob McGuire, looks like a doodlebug, but it was actually built new by Sperry in 1975, according to a roster posted on trainweb.org. Of course, Sperry also has plenty of modern vehicles. This is not your average Ford truck. 
It's a specialized high rail that can carry the same equipment as the Sperry rail cars. And if you're wondering why this has a Connecticut license plate, well, that's because Sperry's headquarters is there. Underneath the middle of the truck, you can see the ultrasonic and induction equipment used for testing. The cameras that allow the operator to look at digital images of the railhead and rail web are at the rear of the truck. And all of this is powered by a generator. Like the rail car, the operator also sits in the rear of the vehicle. And since this is a high rail, there's no need to find space for it on a side track when a train needs to pass. They can just get off the rails on a grade crossing. There's no doubt, this is a cool machine, but nothing beats the classic Sperry car. For nearly a century, these workhorses have been a fixture on the rails of North America. Scanning, detecting, and helping railroads get the job done. I've actually seen Sperry car number 145 three times in 2023 in Tucker, Georgia on CSX's Abbeville subdivision. All three of those encounters, the car was running in the early evening hours. CSX's track geometry train also passed through Tucker and Atlanta recently. And I'm sure several of CSX's cutting edge autonomous track assessment cars have been by too. This track geometry car was also in Tucker back in 2022. I hope to make a video about all these machines at some point. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.